What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. After joining Young Money and swiftly exiting that situation, Omari had to make a move quickly for the sake of his career. He would later sign a deal with EMI and form his own record label called Star World Records, where he got to release his third album called Illusion. The album was not a huge success. In fact, it flopped, only selling about 20,000 copies in its first week. In comparison, his previous solo studio album was 21 and came in at 110,000 copies sold in the first week. Omarion's sales were clearly declining. Omarion then went on to drop a mixtape and a couple of songs, but his career path didn't take drastic changes until he met Rick Ross. How did he meet the MMG boss, you may ask? Well, one random night, Omarion and his crew decided to head to the strip club. It was supposed to be another night of booty shaking and money throwing. However, this time, fate or luck was at play because when they got into the club, they bumped into the Maybach boss himself, Rick Ross. At the time, Omarion was in between label situations and wanted to get Rick Ross on one of his songs. So he approached Ross like, how would you feel about doing a song with me? Instead of talking about the song, Ross immediately praised Omarion's music skills, displayed the utmost respect for him, and offered him a chance to join MMG. And they say nothing good comes from a night out at the strip club. I had some company and I'm like, oh, let's go to show club. And then I heard Rose was in the building. So I went over there to his section, you know what I mean? And I was like, yo, Ross, you know what I mean? I need you to hop on these records. I'm about to do this P and D deal. Cause mm -hmm. this was before I was signed to Maybach. And uh Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, um, I was I was telling him about this deal I was about to do, and he was like, Well man, before you do that, you know, let's have a conversation. And um the conversation went something like you know, I, I respect what you do. I love what you do. I'm a fan of your work. And um, this is easy. We need to do this. After signing to MMG, Omarion seemed eager to prove his worth to the team and appeared on 106 and Park with Rick Ross to share the news. Yeah, I'll make some noise for the newest member of MMG, Omarion. According to Rick Ross, Omarion's work ethic impressed the MMG boss. It really boiled down to the music. He came down to Miami, we got in the studio. He recorded close to a dozen records and I was just so impressed. Not to mention the fact that he's an entertainer, songwriter, actor, dancer. I just thought it was a great move and I wanted to see the homie shine. Now Omarion dropped a lot of music with MMG, however as of late he isn't exactly promoting the MMG camp. So the question is, what happened to Omarion on MMG? Let's find out. Get to the level of accumulate the type of money well. You could dress like Cooch. Yeah. Cooch you go get it and just, you just hear it. Right. You ain't even gotta look and see it. You just Right. Thank you. Pick up your phone and may send out an arrogant tweet. <laughs> Soon after he joined MMG, Omarion released his first official project with the label called Care Package. Overall, the project was pretty good. Songs like MIA, Out Loud, and Admire stood out the most to me. And M.I.A. could have been a dope single if it was just promoted well. Needless to say, this project gave the fans insight into what Omarion was going to be doing on MMG. In fact, Omarion released his entire Care Package series on the label. Now around 2012, MMG released their second compilation album titled Self Made Volume 2. The project debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 98,000 copies in the first week. Not bad for a compilation project. From the looks of things, MMG truly tried to give Omarion a chance to shine, as he appeared on about 5 tracks on the album and was even featured on one of the album's singles titled Let's Talk, a song clearly made with Omarion's target demographic in mind. Overall, it wasn't a huge smash, but it was a start. You and me. 
Boss. Let's talk about tonight, baby. Let's talk about all the good things that could happen. In the following year, Omarion appeared on the next MMG compilation album, namely Self Made Volume 3, an album that performed significantly worse than its predecessor. It came in at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 50,000 copies in the first week. Now despite making appearances in all of these MMG projects, a lot of people were like, Huh? Weren't you signed to Young Money a few days ago? We just saw you pledge your allegiance to YMCMB on stage. So what's going on here? It seemed like Omarion was label hopping. Also one thing that held him back a little bit was that MMG was established before Omarion got there. When most people think about MMG, Rick Ross, Wale and Meek Mill come to mind. And for those that really know their hip hop, we can throw Star Lee, Fat Trail and Gunplay into the mix. Now what do these aforementioned artists have in common? For one, they all rap. But apart from Wale, they all tend to rap about gangster shit. MMG had a gangster rap image and Amarian's presence on the label seemed odd to some. Hip hop labels always attempt to cross over into other markets by signing an R&B or pop act. I think MMG was trying to secure the female audience and for the most part it did work. Now despite the doubt Omarion must have faced when he ventured into business with MMG, Omarion's sex playlist featured one of his biggest hits to date. The smash hit post to be. Janae Aiko had a show stealing feature on the song. She owned it. In fact, her line that goes, You gotta eat the booty like groceries, actually made women want to try new things in the bedroom. And I'll stop right there before YouTube demonetizes this video. Aside from the catchy phrases like, Got to eat the booty like groceries that Janae says, it just feels good. That's a wild line. But it's a wild, memorable line. All the women sing that line. I think Post to Be kind of falls in that place that when you hear it, no matter when you hear it during the day, it feels good. And I think that's what music is supposed to do. It's supposed to evoke emotion. Now in case you didn't notice, DJ Mustard produced the beat and sampled a 1993 classic called Murder She Wrote. Now as far as R&B songs go, Post to Be did not reinvent the wheel. It featured the same topics we've heard before. The usual, I'ma take your girl, I'm getting money, you know, those kind of topics. However, despite its unoriginal bland themes, the song is catchy and was so hot it made it to number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. Now despite the huge success of Post to Be, it wasn't the first single released from this project. Most times the first single released of an artist's project tends to be the most successful, but not this time. You Like It was released first and didn't perform as well as Post to Be, but it was a jam. It's the... I'm going to ride down the road at 35 miles an hour song, you know? It makes you want to relax, unwind, and enjoy the ride. During this time period, Omarion and his girl April Jones decided to let his fans in on his personal life by joining Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. It was a smart move for O because it helped the public get to know him a lot better. Omarion's decision to join the show was very strategic. He wanted to shed his B2K image by exposing the growing side of himself to his fans and hoped this show would make him more relatable to them. They only see him as B2K boy band. Most people, the perception, most people, the perception. And that's why I'm so glad we're doing this show because people don't understand what you are and what you represent. It worked. Omarin became more relatable as a result of joining the show and dropped his first album under MMG after the birth of his son and finale of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. That was the sentiment behind being on Love & Hip Hop. It was always, you know, to promote my music and just let people in the world know who I am as an entertainer because not everyone that entertains starts as young as I did. So essentially I'm growing up in front of people's eyes. This was another piece. This was another part of that. Now as far as sex playlist is concerned, Omarion deviated from his signature R&B B2K sound and gave us a more mature version of him. Sadly, when most of Omarion's day one fans think about Omarion and try to place him on their R&B Hall of Fame list, they put him in the You used to be a singer in B2K box. However, this album was called Sex Playlist for a reason. This album is a significant departure from his earlier sound. As almost every song on the project has a sexually charged or romantic theme, a style reminiscent of artists like Usher and Chris Brown. Now despite knowing what his fans want, the album performed very poorly. It debuted at number 49 on the Billboard 200 
and sold about 16,000 copies in the first week. In the second week, it sold about 5,000 copies. So yeah, this album was a huge flop for Omarion. Now, despite the weak sales, Omarion was still passionate about the project. Sex Playlist is more about connecting than sex. I feel like everything is so now about the turn up and how fast you can do it. It's really about love. I started so young and when I developed, I understood the importance of listening. What's the maturation sonically and lyrically in the past from O to Touch to Icebox? This album is climactic in that aspect. It's touching on how to really connect with a woman. Now despite dropping Sex Playlist, Omarin quickly realized that just because an artist joins a relevant label doesn't mean their music is going to get the push and airplay that it deserves. After dropping two potential hit singles like M.I.A. and Know You Better featuring Fabulous and Pusha T around 2013 and also dropping Sex Playlist which received minimal promotion, Omarion quickly realized that the label was not promoting his music and was like, what's the point of creating a smash when nobody gets to hear it? Despite the hurdles, Omarion kept pushing and dropped Pose to B, a song that came out without much label promo and only became a success because he promoted it himself. Now, after receiving no support from the label, Omarion decided to leave MMG and claimed Atlantic was the real label running things and not MMG. In conclusion, a lot of people didn't understand the reason why Omarion signed to MMG. It was odd to them because most fans knew him as the kid that sang in B2K. They put him in that box, an ice box if you will, one he had serious trouble escaping. Omarion grew from this humbling experience. He saw an opportunity to change his image with MMG and love and hip hop and went for it and in that year he dropped one of his biggest hits to date. As far as his situation with MMG goes, Omarion eventually figured out that he'd be better off without the label and went on to drop music without them. He wasn't exactly doing big numbers on MMG and in my opinion, Omarion was not a good fit for the label. The thing is, Omarion was already established before joining them and should have leveraged his celebrity to get a better deal elsewhere but I understand the move. MMG was making big moves at the time and made Omarion want to be in close proximity to that success. It worked for a while but as they say, all good things come to an end. Omarion is still doing his music thing, in fact he dropped an EP titled with a little help from my friends just this year. Omarion's time with MMG appears to be over but it seems like he's on to bigger and better things. Hey yo, I think it wouldn't be right if I didn't take this moment bro. To publicly apologize to you, man. I did some fucked up shit to my brother. Some snake ass shit. And I'm not proud of it, man. So I want to sit here humbly and sincerely apologize to you. To you. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Marion on MMG, in your opinion? let me know down below. Video requests, let me know down below as well. New what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time. Oh my god. <laughs>